Okay, here we are with the Years Companion magazine of 123 years ago, and we're going to read How the Counterpane Got Smutty. Sounds interesting, an interesting title. So Jennifer wants to read this one to you, so here we go. Liddy Jane, have been have you been in the four room? That was what Grandma Higgins sternly demanded of Aunt Liddy Jane ever so many years ago when she was a little girl. The Higginsons lived in a long log house with two rooms. There was the great kitchen where the break oven was that was large enough for a man to crawl into and a cunning tin baker set up before a roaring fire in the deep fireplace in both of the which Grandma Higgins did all her cooking. That was before stoves came in fashion. One corner of this kitchen was given up to the big loom, which its stout frame, its great yarn beam, and cloth beam, and treadles, and pulleys, and harnesses, and sleighs. And this grandmother used to sit on a high seat and click, clack, thump, thump all day, weaving long webs of linen and woolen for gowns and jackets and trousers. There were a cunning pair of cards, too, in this corner, which in the long evenings she used to card wool into bats for spinning sitting in the firelight. Then there were three, then there were the swifts, the mother wheel with a deep grum voice for spinning wool and towel, and the baby wheel with a hum like that of a bumblebee for spinning the soft flax into linen. These filled that corner full, the big round table and the dresser for the pewter dishes, pewter dishes, little chairs and big chairs, all with bottoms of basket stuff, with a turn up bed in another corner in the cradle, there was always a cradle in the kitchen in those days, made even that great room so full of that Grandpa Higgins used to declare that there wasn't enough room to swing a cat around by the tail. And I don't believe there was without hurting the cat. In the foreroom was the high bedstead with its white netted canopy and dimity counterpane. This was the company bed. Liddy Jane nor Sam nor Amazia nor any of the other little Higgins were allowed to go into this room alone, to even peep into the great mahogany bureau drawers, or to tilt one of the spindled legged chairs. So it was with honor or astonishment that Grandma one day discovered great blotches of smut upon her snow white counterpane. Liddy Jane stoutly denied any knowledge of it. So did Sam, and so did Amazia. But that didn't save them from being sent to bed in the low chamber without their suppers of mush and milk. And threatened with having their mischievous act made known to Parson Wimple, a worthy traveling pe preacher and family counselor who was expected to sleep under the netty canopy the next night. And to preach in Square Brown's new frame barn on Sabbath day. It took Grandma all next day to remove the spots and get the quilt ready. Parsons Wimple came, and Liddy Jane and Amazia and Sam, with their hearts ready to jump out of their mouths, sat primly in their little chairs in all, all in a row, while the baby Higgins hid in the great loom. But Grandma didn't tell him then. Well, when Parsons Wimple went to the hop in under the netty canopy that night, after he had snuffed out the candlelight and rubbed his fingers on Grandma's big braided hearth rug, what should he do but hop right on the, to Dib, the old white cat and her great family of brand new kittens? He was a stranger and did flew at him in a rage. It is safe to say that Parsons Wimple hopped out from under the canopy much quicker even then he had hopped in, and didn't he shout. <laughs> Grandpa ran in, and there 
was old Bib, covered with soot as a chimney swallow, standing on the edge of the bed and spitting at Parson's wimple with all her might, her hair standing up in every which way. She had come down the big low chimney to find a soft bed for her family. That was how the counterpane got smutty. There you go. That was cute. And you know what? That reminded me so much of when we were kids. <laughs> how you a little bit of something done wrong and everything. And oh boy, wait for the priest to come around. Oh, I could feel that through the whole story. It was kind of funny. Takes you back in time and everything. But there's always an answer for everything. All right. I hope you've enjoyed that story. It was very cute. Loved it. And stay tuned for some more as we read some more of the Youth Companion magazine. This one is 123 years ago. Bye-bye now.